Hello everyone everywhere, this is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, which is March 22nd. Today we're continuing our study from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. This is the story about the woman caught in adultery and brought to Jesus for judgment. Uh, we did an introduction the other day. Yesterday we talked about verses 1 through 5. And the focus of yesterday's broadcast was about how Jesus had somika, which allowed him, it was the authority given to a rabbi that he could create his own line of teaching in accordance with the Torah. And that that authority came by two verbal witnesses at the rabbi's baptism in the ministry. When John the Baptist baptized Jesus, John declared him, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus went under the water. When he came back up, God the Father gave his verbal testimony saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus now had authority, Samika, to create his own line of teaching. His own line of teaching was the love of God. That's all he talked about everywhere he went was God loves you, the love of God, all the different aspects of the love of God, that God loved you so much that he was sending his son, Jesus, God in the flesh. He was sending his son to take away the sins of the world. And that it doesn't matter what sin you committed, if you gave your heart to him, he would forgive you of your sins and you would be granted everlasting life. And that's what he talked about. The Pharisees didn't like that because their whole system was set up on legalism. If you do this, you're wrong. If you're wrong, you pay this price, you know, bring in an offering, in which case there were, they had a, a virtual monopoly on the uh, sacrifices. You could bring a perfect spot, spotless lamb, and they would have to examine it before it was allowed to go in for a sacrifice. And no, this, this animal doesn't measure up. Uh, we can't accept that. And th some of these people travel days maybe weeks to get to Jerusalem for these uh, feasts and the sacrifices. And now, you know, the animal that they brought is not worthy. Well, the only option they have left is to buy one that's been declared clean by them. Uh, so they rake in that money and this, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and tell you what, we'll buy this lamb from you and we'll give you, you know, a trade in value, which was pennies to the dollar. Then they take that lamb, wash it up, and they go into the pen with the ones that could be sold to someone else. Uh, that's documented. That's how it worked. Wasn't supposed to work that way, but that's the system they had in place. Well, Jesus is speaking against that. And so the conspiracy came to be that they wanted to get rid of Jesus. In order to do that, they had to discredit him in the eyes of the people because so many people were drawn to him. And that's where we see today uh, in our our reading today in verse number, well, we'll just read from verse one on down so the whole story flows. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came with him. He's drawing people already. It's early morning. So he sat down and taught them. He's sitting on the steps, usually over in the Solomon's porch area. He would sit on the steps. People would come and gather around and hear his teachings. He's a rabbi. That's what he does. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman taken in adultery. Now they come busting into his teaching session, just pushing people aside. They throw this woman down on the ground in front of him. And when they put her down, they said to him in verse 4, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act of adultery. And Moses in the law commands us that this woman should be stoned. But we brought her to you for your judgment. What do you say? So they've made Jesus judge in this matter. And they thought they had Jesus nailed every which way but down. I mean, if he said, let her go, then they could say, see, he doesn't follow Mosaic law. You know, he doesn't follow the Torah. But if he said, go ahead and stone her, then they could tell the people, see, there's no mercy with God. He's preaching mercy. But, you know, in grace, but there's no mercy with God. You know, he, he commanded that she be stoned. So they thought they had Jesus in a pickle, all right? This they said tempting him so they might have something to accuse of him. 
But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he did not hear them. And when they continued asking him, now, we don't know what Jesus wrote. I have a feeling, though, you know, you can't prove it. I can't prove this is what he wrote. You can't prove that I didn't or that he didn't write this. But I think he wrote so me on the ground. Why? Because that is his authority. And his authority is allows him to come up with his own punishment. And when they continue to ask him, pressing him just you know, what do you say? Come on, you got to say something. We brought her to you for judgment. You need to make a ruling. Jesus stood up and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him be the first to cast a stone at her. In other words, what he's saying is sin is sin. There's no difference in sin. You could sin by cursing God. You could sin by cursing your brother. I mean, there's no difference in the eyes of God. You commit a sin, you are no longer going to heaven. You are cursed for an eternal hell. If you stole that cookie out of the cookie jar that your mama said you should not have before dinner, you committed sin. You are no longer worthy of heaven. You are going to hell. Oh, brother, wow, that's just boys growing up. Just saying. It doesn't matter what the sin is. You cut somebody off in the parking lot, they flip you off, so you flip them off. You are no longer worthy of heaven. You are going to an eternal hell. So there's no difference in between flipping somebody off in the parking lot and committing murder. Sin is sin in the eyes of God. It makes you no longer worthy to go to heaven. You are cast into, you are bound for an eternal hell. So Jesus tells them, every one of you have committed a sin. You are no longer worthy of heaven either. You deserve to die and spend an eternity in hell. So if one of you has not sinned, now you have the ability to render judgment against this woman. You should be the first one to cast a stone at her. And when he said that, he stooped down again and started writing on the ground. So me ka. That's his teaching. That's his authority. That's his line of authority. That is his decision concerning this woman. They which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, they knew what he said was true, that they were all worthy of hell, and it didn't matter what sin they committed. They had to depend on the mercy of God. Oh, they could offer the sacrifice. Well, we, you know, we sacrifice 600 lambs a day here. We're covered by the blood. Yes, you are. And that blood provides you mercy and forgiveness and grace in the eyes of God. But it's still covering sin. You have sin in your life. And they realize that by their own conscience. They're like, you know, what he, what he just said is, is true. It doesn't matter what the sin is in the eyes of God. We're all worthy of forgiveness. Not worthy, I'm sorry. We're unworthy of forgiveness, but God has given us a way for forgiveness. It doesn't matter what the sin is. And they're thinking this, and their own hearts are convicted. Them, and the elders to the youngest began to cast down their stone and walk away. Why? The elders had a whole lifetime of sin. Their whole life, they realized that only by the grace and mercy of God that, one, they're still alive, and two, that they have the promise of life in heaven because they obeyed the law and giving sacrifices because of their sin doesn't matter what the sin is, sin is sin. And one by one, they left. And we're going to take it up there tomorrow when Jesus begins to talk to the woman. And this is a way that each and one, every one of you, I hope that you can see that sin is sin. It does not matter 
what your sin is, any sin, every sin, all sin, separates you from the love of God, separates you from the mercy of God, separates you from the grace of God, separates you from heaven itself, and condemns you. The smallest sin condemns you to an eternal hell, unless, I don't want to leave you on a negative, I want to leave you on a positive, unless you accept Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, as your sacrifice, because Jesus said through him is the only way you get to heaven. Through him you receive forgiveness of sins, and you can be blessed in all that you do.